The domesticated canine, otherwise known as dog, has been around for thousands and thousands of years. But there are many questions as to when it first became a companion of man as we know it. The earliest undisputed evidence of dogs being domesticated with human beings was discovered while quarrying in Obertassel, Germany in 1914. First mistakenly classified as a wolf, the Bonn Obertassel dog was buried with two humans around 14,220 years ago. However, there are other theories that suggest dogs may in fact be older. For example, many experts agree that dogs started to separate from wolves starting around 16,000 years before present in southeastern Asia. The first may have appeared in the regions of modern-day Nepal and Mongolia at a time when humans were still hunters and gatherers. Additional evidence suggests that around 15,000 years ago, early dogs moved out of the southern and central Asia and dispersed around the world following humans as they migrated. We may truly never know when humans and dogs came together, but it's hypothesized that around 10,000 years ago, people would have chosen wolf puppies for behaviors like tameness and friendliness towards people. These puppies grew to be hunting companions, tracking and retrieving wounded game as their human packs settled in Europe and Asia during the last ice age. The dog's heightened sense of smell greatly assisted in the hunt as well. Aside from helping humans hunt, dogs would have proved useful around the camp by cleaning up leftover food and huddling with humans to provide warmth. Australian Aborigines may have even used expressions such as three dog night, which was used to describe a night so cold that three dogs would be needed to keep a person from freezing. Some of the earliest archaeological traces of the existence of dogs in the United States can be dated back 9,000 years before present. Dogs came to America after crossing from Siberia to Alaska, and it was during this period that the domestication of dogs began in America. To the early Native Americans, Dogs were not just pets, but members of the tribe, and they were known and loved by the tribe people as one loves a co-worker, a friend, or a family member. It was believed that dogs could see the dead and foresee the future. The Native Americans taught their dogs how to fish and hunt. The Pacific Northwest Indians used their dogs to hunt bear, elk, deer, mountain sheep, and waterfowl. Specially trained dogs would drive elk and deer into the snares. And the dog helped in the hunting of seals and polar bears. They were very skilled hunters and very courageous and protective of their owners and their family. In the colonial and Victorian era, dogs were a commonplace. Breeds would include hounds, bulldogs, mastiffs, pointers, setters, spaniels, terriers, and many others. Smaller breeds were known as comfort dogs and were favored by the women and the elderly as companions, much like they are today. Dogs had long been bred in Europe for hunting and sport and were brought along with the Spanish, French, and British colonists during the colonization of the Americas in the 16th through the 19th centuries. European dogs mixed with American dogs and were further domesticated and bred for specialized purposes. It was well known that George Washington was a dog lover and he kept many dogs over the course of his life. As a child, he had a Newfoundland named Samson. As an adult, he owned and bred many types of dogs, including foxhounds, two of which were named Tiger and Fox. Still others were called Tipsy, Tippler,
taster and drunkard. The American Kennel Club notes that Washington helped develop the American Foxhound breed. Washington also had a Dalmatian known as Madame Moose. Martha Washington, her dog Madame Moose, was a coach dog, which also known as a carriage dog, is one who trots alongside the carriage to protect the people inside. She loved Madame Moose enough to request a male to breed with her so that she would have more coach puppies. John and Abigail Adams had mixed breed dogs. Like George Washington, they also had a sense of humor when naming their canine companions. One was named Juno and the other one was named Satan. Thomas Jefferson became enamored with Brayards when he was serving as Minister of France. He brought home a female named Buzzy who had two puppies on the ship home. President Abraham Lincoln was known to have many dogs throughout his life. Two of the more famous dogs are called Fido and Jip, but there were other dogs that bonded in and out of Abraham Lincoln's life. Although these dogs' names have been lost to history, there are mention of them in many biographies written by Lincoln. The overpopulation of domestic dogs first became apparent in the early 1800s. By the 1830s, New York City had put a bounty for stray dogs, and it had risen to a dollar and the dog register struggled to deal with the number of dog carcasses he received as cash-strapped New Yorkers killed dogs to receive the reward. In 1836, 8,000 dogs were slaughtered. This violence on the streets sparked concerns about the fate of the dogs and the morality of their killers. Members of the middle and upper class were worried that dog killers, many of whom were children, would go to become thieves and worse. Despite the slaughter, New York's stray dog population continued to grow. The 19th century saw a significant transformation of society's attitude towards animals, which reflect in the legal system. The legal system began the century viewing animals as items of personal property, not much different than a shovel or a plow. During the first half of the century, Lawmakers began to recognize that the animal's potential for pain and suffering was real and deserving of protection against its unnecessary infliction. The last half of the 19th century saw the adoption of anti-cruelty laws which became the solid foundation upon which today's laws still stand. In the 19th century, spay and neuter techniques had not yet been developed. One can only imagine what people did to control the population of the animals. And while techniques to sterilize livestock already existed, spaying and neutering procedures for cats and dogs did not become widely available nor accessible until the 1930s. In 1969, the first low-cost spay and neuter clinic opened in Los Angeles and it had a four-month waiting list of people wanting to get their pets sterilized. Every single day in the United States, an estimated 70,000 puppies and kittens are born in the USA alone. The number is estimated at 27 million per year. Tragically, millions of these are put down or euthanized due to overpopulation. On average, approximately 6.3 million companion animals enter the shelters every year. In 1979, Bob Barker, host of the TV game show The Price is Right, began using his signature sign-off to end the program. This is Bob Barker reminding you to help control the pet population. Have your pets spayed and neutered. The population of unwanted dogs and cats will only continue to rise unless people stop breeding, spread the word, become a responsible pet owner and spay and neuter their animals and adopt your animals from shelters instead of buying them or going to a breeder thank you for watching spay and neuter your animals give them treats and spoil them happy trails